The episode opens up in the city of Pretty Lake, where we are introduced to two college students, Adam and Wiley. Though Wiley is only 19 years old, she is pregnant and does not want to reveal the father of the baby. Later in the evening, she is in church, where her dad and sister work. Suddenly, a scream is heard, and on checking, they find their dad lying dead on the floor, with blood all over his mouth. The sisters are left in utter disbelief at how a healthy person like their dad can pass away in this manner. The next day, some more people die in the same fashion by vomiting huge amounts of blood. The scene then fast forwards to the fourth day since the incidents began, and now, about 50 people have already lost their lives. Due to the horrific nature of the deaths, the ministers of Pretty Lake assume that a contagious disease has been spread, and hence, they decide to initiate a quarantine soon. Meanwhile, Adam visits his uncle at the morgue, who happens to be a scientist. He is studying the blood samples of the deceased citizens to try and figure out what caused the outbreak. But even after hours of research, nothing conclusive has come up. It's almost as if the people died without any abnormalities. Worried, Adam returns home and urges his mother that they should leave the city immediately. However, before she can say a word, blood starts coming out of her mouth, and she too dies a painful death. The entire city is surrounded by army officials who put an electric fence along the city boundaries. Following this, we are introduced to the other protagonists of the show, the Creeker Brothers. The elder one is Pat, who is is responsible and hardworking, while the younger one, Ronnie, is a drug dealer who often gets into altercations. A few days later, as the city continues to spiral out of control because of the rapid deaths and the strict quarantine, the Creeker brothers decide to have some fun. They break into the vehicle showroom of the richest man in the city, Charles, and drive away in one of his expensive trucks. However, the cunning businessman notices them via CCTV and decides to take matters into his own hands. He, along with his equally arrogant son, Chuck, follow the Creeker brothers and eventually corner them on an isolated road. Charles then brings out his rifle and forces them to strip down. But before he can proceed with his other devious plans, a good Samaritan by the name of Gord arrives there with a gun and forces Charles to let the brothers go. Stop using your rifle to look at bare ass, Charles. Elsewhere, Adam, being a genius student, hacks into the government website and learns that no one under 22 years old has died from the unknown disease. Shocked, he rushes to the morgue to inform his uncle about it, but finds him dead on the floor. Later, he meets his best friend Wiley and tells her that something unusual is going around, so they should leave the city immediately. Wiley agrees to run away and starts packing her belongings. Unfortunately, a few hours later, her water breaks, leaving her unable to walk. So, she messages Adam and informs him that she can't come. Seeing Wiley in excruciating pain, her sister Melissa tries calling a doctor, but due to the chaos outside, no one responds. Hence, she rushes to the Good Samaritan from earlier, Gord, who also happens to be her good friend and asks him for help. The two of them then head over to Wiley and assist her in delivering a baby boy. On the other hand, Adam reaches the border of the city holding a fence cutter. Unfortunately, he gets spotted by the army officers who open fire on him. Adam gets hit by one of the bullets, but is saved by the bulletproof jacket he is wearing. Four days pass by, but the situation shows no signs of improvement. The government has still not made any breakthrough about what caused the outbreak. With all the people above the age of 22 dead, Melissa starts looking after the orphans at the church. One day, the government announces that the virus is starting to slow down and the quarantine will soon be lifted. But for that, the young citizens will have to gather and burn all the dead bodies. The news gives hope to the remaining citizens and they immediately begin gathering the dead bodies at a designated spot. In the meantime, Chuck has become somewhat of a leader after his arrogant father Charles passed away. He is trying to control the youth of the city so that they don't cause any mayhem. At least his dad's not around to look at their butts anymore. He is also desperately searching for his lost sister Lana, who has been missing for a couple of days. At one time, he and the boys catch the aggressive drug dealer, Ronnie Creeker, stealing medications from a house. Chuck tries to take control of the situation and warns Ronnie to step back, but the latter just won't listen. Instead, he brings out his gun and threatens to shoot the boys if they keep standing in his way. Left with no choice, Chuck lets him go. However, in the evening, when one of the pals shows him an image of a woman with her middle finger cut off, Chuck loses his cool. He recognizes the woman as the owner of the same house from which Ronnie stole the medication and deduces that he did it to steal her ring. Hence, he gathers his colleagues and heads to Ronnie's place for revenge. In the next scene, we see Wiley barging into somebody's house, presumably the father of her child, and searching for something. Right then, a boy walks up to her, holding a knife. Scared, Wiley mentions that she will 
leave, but he stops her and asks her to stay with him. He even opens a safe for her and finds an envelope inside with her name on it. But before he can hand it over to her, Wiley feels dizzy and collapses to the floor. Elsewhere, as Gord is working on his farm, he notices a flock of vultures circling over something in the nearby forest. Curious, he walks to the place, only to find Chuck's sister Lana dead near a tree. She has a revolver in her hand and a wound on her head. Guess she just couldn't stand her dad looking at children's butts anymore. Without wasting any time, he calls Chuck and Adam to the scene. The latter takes a look around the place and deduces that someone tussled with her before she passed away. He also takes pictures of the crime scene, along with a footprint beside the dead body. With a heavy heart, Chuck then picks up his sister's body and burns it, after bringing it to their backyard. That evening, Chuck's other sister, Amanda, who is suffering from autism, tries to prepare some chicken burgers and fries at their grocery store. The little girl believes that her sister, Lana, will soon return home. However, because of her clumsiness, the oil catches fire and a large portion of the store is burned. Amanda is thankfully unharmed, but she is too scared to reveal it was her fault. Hence, when her brother inquires about what happened, she lies that she saw an old truck entering the store. Hearing this, Chuck deduces that the Creaker brothers are responsible for it, as they too have an old truck. Those goddamn Creakers are at it again! Later at night, the whole city gathers around the pile of dead bodies and prepares to set them on fire. At the same time, Adam is looking for a person whom he found on the government website because he believes that he has some information about the mysterious disease. Luckily, he finds the man and takes something out of his pocket, but as he prepares to leave, he hears somebody coughing nearby. On a closer look, Adam is stunned to see Wiley among the dead bodies. He quickly approaches her and carries her out, right before the entire pile is burned to a crisp. Meanwhile, a tiger escapes from the zoo after attacking a little boy who had come there to feed him. That was random? Jeez. The next morning, Chuck finds Alana's cell phone and goes straight to Gord. He asserts that they need to confront the Creaker brothers and teach them a lesson. At first, Gord hesitates, claiming that they can't just go around attacking people. But when he gets to know that Ronnie was the last person who messaged Lana, he agrees to join Chuck. Before leaving the farm, Gord asks his little sister Francis to take care of the cows and feed them. Next, Chuck, along with Gord and his friends, surround the Creaker brothers' house at night and demand Ronnie come out. Worried, the elder brother, Pat, tells Ronnie to hide in the basement while he handles the situation. He then walks out of the house and starts talking to Gord and Chuck. Suddenly, the electricity in the entire town goes out, making Chuck believe that the Creaker brothers are trying to trap them. Hence, he opens fire on Pat, prompting Ronnie to fire back from the basement. When the situation almost gets out of control, Chuck and his group decide to retreat, but while doing so, Gord gets hit by a bullet. Later, Chuck stops his truck at a pharmacy and drops Gord off there. The latter reassures that he's fine and can look after himself. But after Chuck leaves, Gord enters the store and falls to the ground due to the severe loss of blood. Fortunately, his friend Melissa arrives there and helps him back to his feet. She also cleans his wound and stitches it. At the same time, Tracy, the other Creaker sibling, informs Pat that Ronnie has left the house. She also reveals that she checked his phone and found text messages sent to Lana and another girl. Meanwhile, Ronnie can be seen creeping into Chuck's house where his girlfriend Stacy is sleeping. It appears as if the two have known each other for a long time and share a close bond. Ronnie continuously asks for help, claiming that he didn't kill Lana, and Stacy decides to help him. The following morning, she takes him to meet Chuck and help him settle their differences. However, at the very last moment, she betrays Ronnie and lies to Chuck that she was being attacked. Enraged, Chuck, along with his boys, run after Ronnie to beat him up. On the other hand, Gord's sister Frances is trying to turn on the generator to power the farm. To her bad luck, the escaped tiger arrives before her, forcing her to run into the attic. Later, she holds a gun and slowly comes out of hiding. The tiger notices her and starts approaching her, but in the nick of time, she fires off a few shots and finishes it off. Elsewhere, Adam and Wiley decide to take advantage of the power outage to escape the city, as now, only a few army officers are guarding the electric fence. Before leaving, she takes a look at her baby and leaves him in the care of Melissa. After a while, they reach the border and successfully tear open the fence using a cutter. Surprisingly, when they walk past the fence, they notice that the area around them is is covered with landmines. In order to check, Adam throws Wiley's bag to the ground, and as they had expected, a large explosion ensues. The bag is completely destroyed, and a large amount of cash is flying around. 
Why didn't you throw your shoe, you idiot? Adam asks Wiley where she got the money, but she refuses to answer. With their failed attempt, the two then return back to their city. Somewhere else, Ronnie is holding Amanda hostage when Chuck and his boys find him. Worried about the mayhem that she has caused, the little girl finally admits that she was the one who set the supermarket on fire. At the same time, Ronnie also tells Chuck that he didn't kill Lana and asks for a gun in return for Amanda's safety. Having no options, he reluctantly provides him with a rifle and rescues his sister. And before Ronnie can make a move, Chuck attacks him and punches him in the face multiple times. Right then, Gord and Pat arrive at the scene and separate them. They then reveal that Ronnie was actually with Chuck's girlfriend, Stacy, when Lana got killed. Ronnie then walks away from there, stating that the fight has just begun. In the next scene, Gord returns to his farmhouse and becomes terrified. After seeing a dead tiger in the front yard, he immediately goes inside and begins searching for Frances. Moments later, he finds her and mentions that their parents would be very proud of the bravery that she is shown today. On the other hand, when Wiley returns home, Melissa yells at her for leaving her child and walking away without informing her. Hearing this, Wiley becomes angry and exits the house, but not before informing her sister that she doesn't have to look after her baby boy anymore. Later, while Wiley is wandering around the city, she meets Ronnie. He tells her that she can stop by his place if she wants, and surprisingly, Wiley agrees to go with him. The next morning, the two head to the woods to hunt, leaving her little boy in the care of Tracy. Elsewhere in town, two young kids, Harrison and his friend, break into Chuck's car warehouse and drive away in an expensive black car. Outside, Chuck's boys notice the robbery and start chasing them. Moments later, Harrison loses control of the car and crashes it into a ditch. He and his friend try to run away from the scene, but get caught by Chuck's boys. Later, they are brought to Chuck, who decides to punish them unless they come up with a good apology. However, Harrison does not apologize and instead berates Chuck for acting as if he is the head of the state. This enrages the latter, so he ties Harrison to a metal pole. Meanwhile, Adam again visits the place in the forest where Lana's body was found before. He looks around and discovers a cap, similar to what Pat Creaker used to wear during baseball games. With this information, Adam decides to investigate the case himself. Later, he secretly heads to the Creeker residence and takes a look at the boots kept outside. Surprisingly, the prints on the back of the boots match the ones in the picture. Adam then tries investigating more, but right then, Tracy notices him and inquires about what he's doing there. To escape the situation, Adam lies that he's simply looking for Ronnie to get some drugs. Elsewhere, Wiley can be seen enjoying her time with Ronnie. After drinking a few beers, he tries to make out with her, but Wiley makes it clear that she is not interested in him. Despite this, Ronnie does not stop and keeps forcing himself. Luckily, Tracy arrives there in time and hits him with a spade, providing Wiley enough time to escape. Later at night, Pat meets up with Adam and tells him that he didn't kill Lana, but he tried to stop her from committing the unthinkable. This explains why there were signs of struggle near the place where she died. He then hands Adam a note and prepares to leave. Just then, Chuck arrives there with his boys and starts shooting at Pat. The latter somehow manages to escape, and before Chuck can go after him, Adam intervenes. He claims that Pat is innocent because Lana had actually committed the unthinkable. To verify his claim, he hands Chuck his sister's last note that Pat gave him earlier. Chuck is devastated by the revelation, and to make matters worse, he is informed that the boy he tied to a pole earlier, Harrison, has become unconscious. It turns out that the boy is diabetic, and he has gone into an insulin shock. Luckily, some people arrive at the scene and successfully manage to resuscitate the boy. Back at the house, Pat talks with Tracy and gets to know about their brother's recent shenanigans. He berates Ronnie and warns him to not do it again, or else there will be consequences. After some time, Wiley approaches Pat and asks him to drop her near the city. However, he refuses, stating that Chuck and his boys are looking for him. In the final scene, while Adam is talking to one of his teachers, the power comes back into the city and everyone becomes elated. Unfortunately, the teacher, who just turned 22, starts